Good morning, Sunday School friends. I am so excited to be teaching you the next part of this story. This story is going to be part four, five, and six. Miss Linda last week told us one, two, and three. And there's seven total parts of the story. So next week is the final part. This morning, we are going to start our story and take a minute to just relax before we begin. So these are our chimes, and when I bang them together, you will hear a really sweet sound. And when this sound is finished, you'll know the story is about to begin. And what we can do during the sound is just take a couple deep breaths to get ready for the story. On the fourth Sunday in the season of Easter, we remember how the disciples went north to Galilee, as Jesus told them. It took about four days to walk. Many of them were fishermen, so they went to the Sea of Galilee to rest. This was a place they knew as boys. They had fished there with their fathers. Suddenly, Peter stood up and said, I'm going fishing. The rest went with him to prepare the boat. Soon they pushed out to the lake, and the salt filled the, the wind. They fished all night, but they caught nothing. Still the sounds and smells of the lake comforted them. They were home. In the morning, the sky turned pink and then blue. They could make out the shore and someone standing by a fire. They could see the smoke and red gold glow from the charcoal burning. Have you caught anything? All they could say was no. Throw your nets in on the other side. What could they lose? They pulled in the empty nets and threw them out to the other side. They could feel the fish moving as they held the ropes. John was not paying attention to the fish. He leaned forward and watched the man moving on the shore. He said to Peter, it is the Lord. Peter stood up. He jumped. He swam. He felt the sand under his feet wash ashore. The others turned the boat toward land. The nets were so full they could not pull them in, so they dragged them behind the boat. As they walked toward the fire, the stranger called out, Bring some fish! When they gathered around the fire, the stranger was no stranger. They all knew it was Jesus, but they were afraid to say anything. Have some breakfast. There were fish cooking on the fire. He gave them fish and bread. They talked as they ate. The fish and bread also tasted of home. Then Jesus asked Peter, Do you love me? Yes, of course. Feed my lambs. Do you love me? Yes. Tend my sheep. Do you love me? You already know I do. Feed my sheep. He then began to talk to Peter about growing old and how you need help in old age. Sometimes people tell you what to do, even if you don't want them to. Years later, they wondered if Jesus had been preparing Peter for his death in Rome as an old man. Jesus said, follow me. Did he mean all of them? No. Peter got up and the two of them walked off along the shoreline. Peter looked back and saw John following them. What about this man? Will he die like the rest of us? It is not for you to know such things. Peter fell silent and Jesus was gone. Now I wonder what in this room that we could bring to the circle that could help us remember this story.
I wonder what you guys think we could bring in this room to the circle that could help us remember this story. On the fifth Sunday in Easter, we remember how all the disciples gathered in Galilee. They gathered together and went to the mountain to meet Jesus. He was already there. It was good to see him, even in this new way. But what were they supposed to do now? Listen, he was talking with them. What was that? All authority in heaven on earth has been given to me. What was he talking about? Then he said something that could, they could understand but did not want to hear. Go everywhere. Tell my story. Even this part to everyone. Show them how to be good disciples. Tell them the story so they can become part of it. Baptize them in the name of the Father the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. This was too far to travel, too much to do. Then, in their dismay, they heard him say, I am with you always to the end of the age. Then he was gone. What did he mean? As they walked back south to Jerusalem, they knew they had been followers. Now they were to be leaders. They had been sheep, and now they were to be shepherds. They had come home for the last time, and now they were to make a home for others. I wonder what we could bring to this circle to help us remember this part of the story. shepherd. I wonder what you think could be brought to the circle to help us remember this story. You guys can reply in the comments on the Facebook page. Now for our last part of this part of the story. On the sixth Sunday in the season of Easter, we remember how the disciples returned to Jerusalem. They gathered again in the room and Jesus was there. They were more comfortable now with the new way of knowing him, so they asked many questions. Most of them were foolish. Lord, will you restore the kingdom to Israel? Jesus cut short such talk. It is not for you to know the times or the seasons. He then led them out of the room and through the streets. They went beyond the walls of Jerusalem to a hillside, perhaps near Bethany. Je Jesus stopped and they gathered around him. He lifted up his hands, looking at each one and blessed them. He then withdrew and a cloud took him out of sight. The disciples stood looking into the sky until someone said, Why are you looking up into the sky? There were two men standing there, dressed in white. The disciples felt silly. What were they to do, looking up into the sky for what they could no longer see? The strangers then answered their own question. This was Jesus. He is gone now, as you have known him. It seems like a great weight was lifted from their shoulders. The disciples turned and walked back to Jerusalem. Now they had no, no weight. What was this Holy Spirit he said was coming? How would they know when it arrived? They waited and waited. While they waited, they found someone to replace Judas. God helped them choose Matthias. So now they were the twelve once more. But they still had to keep waiting. How long would it take the Holy Spirit to come? Hmm. 
I wonder what we could bring to this circle that would help us remember this part of the story. The bird from the baptism story, the Holy Spirit. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for this Sunday School lesson. This lesson is called Knowing Jesus in a New Way. And next week we'll be doing the final part of this story. And we will be talking about Pentecost. And I look forward to seeing you guys then. Um, if you have any questions or need anything, give us a call. We miss you all terribly and we look forward to seeing you guys soon. Bye.